huge, huge victory in favor of Hulk, Hulk Hogan. $140 million ver dollar verdict against Gawker um, over uh, use of his sex tape. Uh, there will be an appeal. Uh, many think the appeal is um, the stronger uh, legal position here. It's not unusual um, for trial court decisions, uh, particularly of this magnitude, to um, have review and, and adjustment or completely uh, be set aside on appeal. Um, so this is not the end of the story, uh, but the beginning of the story is that Hulk Hogan pretty thoroughly body slammed uh, Nick Denton. Uh, Cash, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, so I'm torn on this. Um, as a journalist, I want the media to be as free as possible to report on whatever we think is important. Um, but as a person who writes a lot about privacy, um, I uh, am very conflicted about playing people's sex tapes uh, as, a, as a journalistic activity. Um, so, you know, I, I talked to a lot of privacy advocates, um, privacy lawyers who, who really felt that Hulk Hogan needed to win um, in order to, to protect the privacy of sex tapes, that sex tapes should be something that just aren't in the public domain that we don't need to play, um, kind of like social security numbers in that journalists wouldn't be able to to publish those. Um, so, uh, so there was part of me that um, kind of was was happy to see the, a precedent that uh, that sex tapes are are kind of toxic, um, that it's not not part of what 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 journalism includes. Um, but I also every legal expert I talked to said that Gawker is very 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 likely to win um, on appeal uh, based on the appeals court has already you know, um, indicated that they think it's up to news organizations to determine what's newsworthy and not up to to judges or juries. Right. Well, no, get back to that um, Christian Science Monitor photo essay that I referenced earlier, it's really uh, fascinating to go through there and see the uh, differing views on privacy in 2016 and how many seem to feel that we we have these zones beyond which you cannot cross uh, the sex tape maybe being one of them, although that doesn't come up specifically in that uh, photo essay. Uh, and others in that essay though, seem to just have completely uh, abandoned the notion uh, that anything that is committed to a digital, digital shareable format um, has any kind of reasonable expectation of privacy. Um, and I'm wondering, Ron, what you th where you fall on the spectrum and, and how you think um, things should have come out here or should ultimately come out on appeal. Well, there's the expectation of privacy question. I mean, I, I think it, as a practical matter, sir, as someone who has to give advice to people and organizations, both pre, post and in the middle of, everyone understands, I think, and anyone who doesn't is making a serious mistake, if you record it, if you write it, if you blog it, if you tweet it, there is no expectation of privacy ever. Uh, and, and we should add, if you if you don't encrypt it. Oh, well, actually, I was about to say something much more profound, yeah. which is if you do encrypt it. Ah. Um, the iPhone, notwithstanding, uh, maybe that's just you know, th th there's a, there's a remember that the 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 magic of the iPhone situation is that it blows up if you try to uh, if you try to brute force decrypt it too many times, but mm -hmm. that's because everyone knows that most encryption can ultimately be decrypted. So if you don't have a situation where your encryption can ultimately be decrypted, which most encryption can, even your encryption is only a temporary solution. So once we understand that, that, that which is reduced to some form that can ultimately be um, digitized, which is to say everything <laughs> um, is not reasonably amenable to an expectation of privacy, as a practical matter, that answers the, the empirical question about expectations of privacy. Now the policy question. Is that the world we really want to live in? When we set the, you know, the, the, the historical or the, you know, the classic legal test of the expectation of privacy, was that, was that really what we had in mind? And I think the answer is, is clearly no. The expectation of privacy um, 
formulation never, never anticipated the kind of world we live in now of, of essentially free and effortless reproduction and publication of anything, anytime, anywhere, by anyone. And I, and I think we need to revisit that standard. Um, not because a little, uh, the best response to falsity is truth, um, because first of all, that, that formulation isn't necessarily even accurate. I, I heard a very good piece yesterday about, about social shaming. Uh, the effect of social shaming um, lives on far, far beyond the time of the correction. Um, we have to be serious about what's going on in the internet. There used to be a time when cranks and, and weirdos used to just print things out on, you know, on a mimeographed sheet and go around town and stick things up on storefronts and, 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 and telephone poles. There's no, um, there's no barrier to entry for publication of, the, of malicious and, and untrue and private information that is no one's business anymore. Um, now, these tapes, these sex tapes, are, in fact, true reflections of reality, things that really took place. So, they're, they're, you know, now, why on earth you permit yourself to be recorded I don't really know the facts in this case. I, I, I try to stay away from the lurid in society to the extent humanly possible. That's not all that easy. But there is a category, I suppose, of, of sex tapes that are taped with consent, and there are those that are tape, taped without consent. If, if you're stupid enough to allow yourself to be taped with consent, then you've put yourself into a certain amount of risk that, I, you know, nice going, you know. Uh, but having said all that, I do think as a policy matter, there, 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 it, a reasonable person could conclude that the world we're living in today, yes, I agree with every, with every First Amendment expert in the world who says that this verdict is not going to stand in its present form and certainly not in its present um, number of places before the, um, before the, 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 um, the decimal. It's preposterous. Uh, I also agree that there's something out of whack right now there's something out of kilter and the idea that there's essentially no accountability um for just throwing stuff out at at people uh whether they're public figures or private figures um is something that as a society if there's any way that we can revisit it i don't can the genie be put back in that in the bottle i don't know but it's you know if, there, if there's any way to have a serious discussion about it then we should have it since I specialize in the lurid, I can um, I can chime in to say that this particular <laughs> sex tape um, it was made in a friend's home by a surveillance camera in his bedroom. Um, so Hulk Hogan or Terry Aaliyah, which is his real name, uh, you know, has said he did not know that the the film was being made. So it was you know what we would call non consensual porn or revenge porn, um, which I think made his his case more sympathetic. To the jury, um, but Denise, I, was, I don't. I just don't believe people when they say that there's no, you know, no right to privacy or that anything mm -hmm. that you put in digital form loses all, like loses all privacy protection. Because I just don't think that we can live that way as human beings. Because then it means right. that we're living in a panopticon, and it would just be too destructive for our, you know, human psychology to to live that way. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think you you do need to in the world that we live in take precautions. Um, but at the same time, uh, one of the one of the photos that really stood out to me was um, Gautam Hans, who talked about privacy uh, as it relates to secondhand smoke and this idea that you can be affected by other people's actions. Um, so all of the members of Ashley Madison who thought that they, you know, were part of this like very secure, very private site, if, if that holder of your data doesn't protect it, then, you know, you wind up losing your privacy. And so I think that's what makes privacy even more challenging now, nowadays. Even if you protect your computer and you encrypt it and, you know, you're really careful with your email messages and your phone, if the person on the other side of your conversation is not doing those same things, then your privacy can very easily be violated. I, I think this case is is troubling for a couple of different reasons. Um, one is I, I – I'm scared of a potential reality where nothing is is no longer sacred and no longer private simply because it's recorded in some sort of digital form. I think there's a meaningful distinction between having uh, knowingly participating in some 
some communication that you know is somehow recorded in an email or a voicemail or, or something else um, where what you've said is is somehow going to be um, could be disseminated. Uh, whereas unknowingly, and I guess there was maybe a, a conflicting evidence as to whether whether the Hulk knew that this was being recorded, but to the extent that you unknowingly participate in something that is being recorded, uh, I don't think you, and I don't think we should as a society ever get to the point where we say, well, you know, all bets are off. You have no expectation of privacy. We, we can't mm -hmm. be going in that direction. I think that would be a, a huge, massive disservice to all of us. Um, the other thing that I think is notable about the the verdict, Denise, you mentioned the figure. Mm -hmm. the The verdict was one hundred and fifteen million dollars, and then punitive damages were twenty five million. And so Gawker's defense was, look, this is somehow newsworthy or noteworthy because there were racial uh, uh, statements made by the Hulk and and therefore it's newsworthy. We should be able to expose him as being a racist. Uh, the jury clearly didn't buy that as being newsworthy, I guess, in, in conjunction with the, the the sex acts that were were being performed by the Hulk. I guess it was just uh, there was just too much there. Mm -hmm. um, and so. You know, the jury essentially found no redeeming value associated with publishing this. I agree with Ron. I agree with Cash that I think this is unlikely to to withstand uh, an appeal. This was in state court, so it's going to be appealed through the state court system. It's not going to go through the, the federal court system unless it ultimately uh, wends its way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. But it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, see what the appellate courts do with it.